Welcome to Chronosphere Fiction. This is your Chronosphere pilot, Daniel French. Prepared to take you on another journey through the spectral streams. Buckle in, kids, and remember to help us out with fuel at our Patreon site. On this journey, we bring you episode two of Daniel Dread, a collaboration between Lothar Tuppen, Mark Slade, and myself with fantastic voice actors that you'll hear about in the credits. Get ready for some paranormal monster hunting. And for those of you in the squeamish lot, please be advised that in scene three, there's some graphic audio violence. With that said, let's travel into Mark Slade's bubble verse of Daniel Dredd. The Ninth, the Ninth Tower, Tower Productions. Productions. Fishbonius Sound Design. When I was a kid, the person I hated the most was my bully and tormentor. You're one ugly son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The hell's with that round bald head, huh? Dad didn't like to work. That's why Mom left. Well, truth be told, she always had eyes for other men. But she also didn't like the fact that a man just couldn't hold a job. And that he drank more than his weight in beer. Just a year after my mom left, dad was injured in a car accident. He settled out of court for $35,000. He got a monthly check from the trucking company and... Well, lucky for him, the truck had faulty brakes and they didn't drug test him. I don't know. Weird thing is, the kid had his hair up until last week. You know what he told me? <laughs> he, he said... He, he said there was a monster under his bed. <laughs> He always sat in the trailer with that weird albino J.J. Groan. All the kids who walked by his trailer crept by and hoped that J.J. didn't see them. He was always looking at you like you were a piece of chicken, licking those huge blood-red lips and staring a hole in you. Hey, boy. You got monsters under your bed? Maybe you ought to sleep in my bed. Hey! Answer the man, you little creep. That's okay, partner. I'm gonna have plenty of time to talk while you're on your date. Speaking of which, I gotta get going. Thanks for watching the kid, JJ. I owe you a six-pack when I get my check. <sighs> oh, yeah. We're gonna have a wonderful time. Hey, where are you going? Oh, we're going to your bedroom, huh? What the? Oh, 
Puppet, you were not expecting me, were you? <laughs> God? Oh, God? God can't help you now, you groveling snot. Come closer. So that I can taste your flesh. Daniel! Daniel! Daniel, are you going to stay in the bathroom all day? Come on! Is he still in there? Yes, damn it. I'm getting sick of this. He needs to grow a pair and face what's right in front of him. He's in there talking to himself again. Okay, so if I understand how you feel, but you have to understand Daniel's point of view. What he goes through is not easy. I know that. Come here. Get your daily hug from old Rufus. There we go. Where's that wonderful, understanding, beautiful girl named Sophie? She's still here, Rufus. I... I guess I just need a break from all this weird stuff happening in our lives. I know. I, I can safely say that Daniel feels the same way. He's lived with it longer than both of us. That's an understatement. I'm standing here, looking into a mirror, feeling a fleshy lump in the middle of my chest the size of a softball. I'm in considerable pain. I haven't destroyed a monster in three weeks, and Sophie has a right to be upset with me. I've turned down too many cases. She looks at the computer screen and sees the email inbox overloaded with requests for us to help solve the problems of those whose lives are affected by the strange. I need to feed... I know that. If you're weak, so am I. Moloch is the demon inside me. He was just a monster under my bed. The day he came into my life, I lost all of my hair. I was only 12 years old, but he did save me from a potentially traumatic event. After he murdered that despicable human being, I was shipped off to Arizona to live with my mother. That's where I met Sophie. She was a 20-year-old girl who lived next door. I helped her solve a problem. We've been friends ever since. I am starving. I heard you the first time. I do not want to die. I heard you the first time. Just uh, leave me alone for a few seconds, please. We are never going to separate, Daniel. Never. Until you help me get my vengeance and recoup my glory. You need to accept it. You're right. There is no way out of this. I can't see a way out of this. No matter how I look at it, I was dealt a bad hand from birth. Maybe, just maybe, I should accept that hand and play the game to win instead of to lose. Come on, Daniel, we have a case we need to get moving on. Please, fucking grow a pair. Okay, let's do this. Jesus Christ, thank you. I have to pee. I really should buy a nightlight. Try and find the right light switch. Don't. <gasps> I rather like the way you look in the shadows. You got a nice shape to you, baby. Who's there? I can't believe you don't remember me. Your old lover boy. I can't see you, whoever you are. I said, don't turn on the light. You don't remember my voice, Marge? I... no. I'm afraid... Wait, Donald? Don Ellison? Bam! Give the lady her prize. I haven't seen you in years, Don. How? How did you find me? Eh, a few friends of ours. They gave you away. Former bosses, landlords, husbands. <laughs> yeah, 
I'm real sorry about that, Don. Yeah, me too. Mind if I come inside? Eh, it's your house. Just don't turn the lights on. Not yet. Mind if I sit? Eh, like I said, it's your house. So what made you want to find me, Don? After 12 years? Eh, you know, I haven't had a beer since we were last in Dawson, New York. Remember that? We saw Jeff Beck at the Dolly Hampton Amphitheater. God, I love to listen to Jeff Beck. He sure can make that guitar sing. You didn't answer my question. Ah, you didn't answer mine. If you found me to see what my life is like, here it is, baby. Take a look around, Don. You see anyone in my life? See the shape my house is in? Falling down around me. I'm sure you've staked me out, too. Been watching the diner while I'm a waitress. No man, no kids, no dog. My life sucks. Uh, yeah. What do you want? Margie, I've... I've been plagued with terrible dreams these past few years. See this? It's a tiki doll. <laughs> I call him Willie. Willie belonged to an old black man, lived on the street out behind the grocery store I used to work for. Yeah, I gave up on being a rock star, Margie. I became a meat cutter. Then the store went to packaged meats and my hours were reduced. So I quit out of frustration. The night I quit, I was taking a shortcut home, an alley behind the store. Somebody jumped me, cold cocked me from behind. I looked up and saw that toothless old black man with the one milky eye. He was holding a two-by-four over his head, ready to beat me to death. Damned if neither one of us noticed at first, but... <laughs> this tiki doll had fallen out of the old man's nasty, dirty overcoat. Willie's eyes lit up and he started talking to that old man. Told him to have mercy. Begged the old man not to kill me. So the old man dropped the board. He picked up Willie here and turned his back on me. I picked up that board and bashed his head in. Over and over and over! Until that old man's head was as flat as the pavement his motionless body laid on. So I picked up Willie here. We've been friends ever since. Oh, God. I'd like you to leave now, Don. Meh. Come on, Margie. We're just talking. I didn't mean to upset you. I'm not upset. I'm afraid of you. <sighs> yeah. I guess you should be, baby. God, I used to be really proud walking down the street holding hands with you. <laughs> I knew I had the best-looking woman in the city. Making love to you was like... I don't know, listening to a symphony or uh, looking at a Rembrandt. Shit, eating pasta at Shabara's on 9th Street. Yeah. Would you leave, please? Yeah, I should go. Wait. <laughs> uh, can I, uh, can I have one last kiss? I don't. Come on. Please just go. I'll go. And you just give me one little kiss, Margie. For old time's sake, huh? Okay. <sighs> that... That was nice. Yeah, I can see you like that, too. Don? I had a dream about you, Margie. That's why I came. I had a dream about you... and some demons. <laughs> Oh, God. No God is going to help you now, Margie. How was that, Willie, huh? Was that violent enough for you, you fucking bloodthirsty bastard?
Where are we headed? Evendale, North Carolina. Hmm. Okay. Want me to wake Rufus and have him take over? No. I'm okay. Might not be for other drivers on the road. Why? You don't think I'm a good driver? No, I... <laughs> Look, no. I didn't say that. So, what... Why would it be bad if the other driver saw me? Because, you know... Ah, uh, forget it. I didn't mean anything. They can't see me anyway. Just drop it, Sophie. Because it's dark, dummy. <laughs> well, the headlights shine in the car. Then maybe it's time for you to learn to drive, hmm? I don't think so. I would kill someone. Uh, you're too hard on yourself, Daniel. But I think you'd be an excellent driver. Do I tell her I love her now? God, I love everything about Sophie. That laugh, those deep brown eyes, the little curl at the end of her long, honey brown hair that drapes the nape of her neck. What am I saying? Oh, I, I, I'm talking stupid. <laughs> Jeez, no way in hell anyone could fall in love with someone like Sophie. <sighs> but I've known her since I was 13. I've also loved her since I was 13. I'm going to pull into this gas station, need some junk food and whatever other crap we can find, including some candy. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Any parking spaces here? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Uh, uh, are we there yet? No, stopping for gas and such. I think I will get some hot fries. Uh, if you have gas again, I'm going to leave you on the side of the road, Rufus. I'm not even kidding. It wasn't my fault, Sophie. It was the person who made my burrito at Juan's Enchilada Shack. It put too many jalapenos on the damn thing. Oh my god. You're disgusting. You're gross. Men are disgusting. What? Stop teasing Sophie. Ease, you're so jealous. You should tell her you bought that disgusting contraption from a joke store. <laughs> ah, the look on her face when she heard the fake fart and smelled it. <laughs> Daniel, have you ever thought how ridiculous it would be to others if you had a relationship with Sophie? No more ridiculous than your sense of humor. Hey, some people think I'm funny. My humor helps ease tensions. And... By the way, maybe you should find a sense of humor. Your world would be just a tad less depressing. What's wrong? Something doesn't feel right. Like how? I can't explain it. Moloch talking to you? No, but he is moving around a bit inside my chest. Hi. Can I have a pack of cigarettes? Oh, sure. Anything else? Just the cigs, combos, and big gulp here. That's it. Oh, sure, sure. I'm supposed to ring these up, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. You are. <laughs> you must be new, huh? <laughs> yeah. Today's my first day, actually. Need a bag? <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. Good luck. This guy's weird. You fellas need anything? Uh, no, sir. We're just looking around. Take your time. Uh, yeah. I don't have a good feeling about him at all. I need some coffee. You're getting ding-dongs. At 2 a.m. So? I'm hungry. What's wrong? You hear that? No... I don't hear anything. Hey! Daniel, where are you going? Come on, man, that's the back room of the store. I knew I heard something. A young woman in her 20s was bound by ropes on her wrists and ankles. She was wearing nothing but bra and panties. Her eyes were wild and full of fear. Holy shit. Out of the darkness. A creature with yellow eyes and long claws slowly made its way into the light. Uh, 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 
Out in the store, he was the clerk who asked if we needed anything. In the dark back room, he was one pissed off son of a bitch that Rufus and I had interrupted a little game of bug caught in a spider web. Eventually, the girl was going to become its meal. Oh, shit. Damn it, Daniel. What have you got me mixed up in now? Rufus, stop, will you? I got this. Okay, okay. Just trying to be helpful. Follow me inside. Slowly. Okay, sure. Sure. Slowly, bend down. Okay. Untie the woman. Slowly. Uh, I don't know about this, Daniel. I... Just do it. Okay, okay. I'm doing it. Slowly. Good. Now her legs. Okay. Take the gag out of her mouth. <laughs> Get me out of here! <laughs> Don't speak. Rufus? Yes, Daniel? Slowly. Help her up. Okay. Get ready. Ready for what? To run! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> the creature bum-rushed us. I could hear Rufus and the woman scream as they ran away. Something overcame me. My body started to convulse and my eyeballs retreated into the back of my head. A sudden burst of light shot out of my empty eye sockets. The laser beam of light caught the creature square in the face, turning it into ash. Ah, uh, yummy. <laughs> what the hell? Huh. I guess we made a good choice stopping here. Hmm. That bra and those panties are cute. Maybe I'll have to buy a pair. Sophie. Sophie. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, Rufus. Having fun? Hell, hell no. Daniel found a woman tied up in the back room. She was going to be a late supper or an early breakfast. Anyway, he found a monster. Of course he did. That's why we came here, stupid. <laughs> You two decide what you want to order? Unfortunately, my friend isn't talking to me at the moment. This is some kind of a prank, huh? What do you mean? Look, mister, you know what I mean. I'm starting to get agitated. Lady, I ain't pulling no prank. You come in here carrying a doll or something, and then you act like the thing talks? You're either crazy as shit or, or you're pulling a prank. I can't help it if my friend won't talk. Jesus, lady, I'll just order for both of us. For the love of God. Yeah. Okay, shoot. What are you going to have then? I'll have the all-American burger. Onion rings. No fries. They give me gas. He'll take a steak. Medium well done with portobello mushrooms. Both of us want Cokes. All right. Be out in a few with your food. Come on. Stop this. You got to talk. People think I'm crazy. Don't give me that look. Hey. You got a staring problem? Yeah, that's right. Move to another table. The kid's face looks like a Mack truck leveled it. Dumb bitch. Hold on. What's wrong? My friend didn't order this. He ordered a medium rare steak with onions. No, he didn't. He ordered medium well done steak with portobello mushrooms. Medium well done and medium rare are the same thing. Sides, we were out of mushrooms. You're fucking with me. Okay, there's no reason to curse. This is a family restaurant. Charlie! What? We got a nutcase out here causing a problem. What's going on? This guy says his doll didn't order this steak. Of course he didn't order it. I ordered it for him. I know what my friend likes. I'm gonna knock his head clean off. Get out of here before I throw you out of here. If it's a fight you want. You don't want to do that, buddy. Two cops sitting over in the corner over there enjoying their burgers and tea. Oh, you'll see us again. I guarantee it.
What are we up against, Rufus? According to this website, it's a Yama Abba, a two-mouthed woman who eats young girls and young women between the age of 11 and 25. Japanese mythology states that she splits one side of her skull to reveal another mouth of tiny fangs and forked tongue. What was back at the gas station was not a two-mouthed woman. No, no, no. The client stated in his email that he believed there was a nest here near his farm. This place is huge. What does he grow here? But apples. You can't tell this is an apple orchard? You forget I dropped out of school in the eighth grade. <laughs> oh my god. That's not an excuse. All that television you watched and nothing educational. TV is overrated, especially PBS. Let's find this guy and get the lowdown. You own this farm, Mr. Canton? Unfortunately, I do. Why do you say unfortunately? This cursed venture hasn't made me a dime in three years. I keep hoping the bank takes it from me. They keep stringing me on. I can't grow a damn apple here even if I grow it in a test tube. Why won't the bank just close you up? I don't know. Ralph Sellers is an old friend and I keep begging him to close on me. He, he just won't. If I was dying, like on my last day of hurting, I expect my best friend ever would at least put me out of my misery. I still don't understand Ralph Sellers' motive. Where are your workers, Mr. Kenton? No reason to have them if I'm not putting anything out. <sighs> and besides... Uh, couldn't keep any. They're all scared off, or, or the females and their families were murdered. Uh, from your email, Mr. Canton, anywhere between the ages of 10 and 11 and 25, in three years, at least six young women or girls were murdered by this ghastly demon. Is that what you wrote? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Do you authorize me and my team to do whatever it takes to rid you and your loved ones of this creature? Yes. Yes. You exclude us of full responsibility of any death or damages. Damn. Damn. Okay. I do. Just a formality, Mr. Canton. Going to court every month can be exhausting. Look, I'm, I'm just going to tell my story and then I'm going to get out of the way. You can burn this mother to the ground for all I care. Uh, did something wrong. I'd been married for 22 years when I met Jenny. Her and her aunt and uncle had worked for me some 15 years. Jenny's parents died working for another Apple distributor when she was three. Her aunt and uncle were the best workers I'd ever employed. I helped them acquire a house and was the least I could do. They stayed on with me during the financial trouble. Years later, I helped pay for her schools and hadn't seen Jenny in six or seven years. They were big in the Asian community, and I was well-liked by the same community. I always tried to treat everyone right who works for me in the apple orchards. Jenny came back from a trip to Thailand. I hardly recognized the little girl who played in my fields, and I fell madly in love with her. Didn't take long for us to start up a relationship. Then, then my life turned to shit. I don't like sneaking around. Oh, I don't either. But... But no one would understand. What are we going to do if anyone finds out? I'll pay the price then. You'll lose your wife, your children, possibly the orchard. But I'll have you. Soon, we were found out. And I overreacted. I had my rifle with me. <gasps> Someone's in the bushes! Whoever it is, he ain't moving now. I had shot her uncle, and his dying words was, she brought shame on our family. Ah, Jenny was no longer Jenny. With his dying breath, her uncle had uttered a curse. she became become a two-mouthed screaming creature with long claws. Now she hunts the countryside for young women to feed her children. Oh, all I could do was, was run away. This is the first time I've been to the orchard in three years. I stay at my empty house, and I drink all day and all night, trying to forget what happened. But nothing, nothing stops these terrible memories. This, this was all my fault. 
This thing hunts young women. And it's all my fault. Well, you did the right thing. You called us. We'll take care of this creature. Don't worry. You know how fast you were going? Sign says 55. Being a smart ass, mister, you were going 90. Sign says 65. Huh. I guess I was wrong. Ah! Ah! Let me go! Let me go, police brutality! Let me go! Son of a bitch bit me. Stand down, officer. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Better listen to Haynes. You know there's a camera over there recording everything. Yeah. Sometimes I lose my head, man. Better listen to Haynes. You're all going to hell with me. And you better pray to the Lord of your soul, my master, don't get a hold of you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. What? I told you to shut up. And you're gonna do what I tell you, or I'm gonna rip your tongue out of your head. Don't say nothing more for a few minutes. Good. He shut up. I thought I was gonna have to use my nightstick again. Hey, now. I told you there's a camera. I was just joking. How come you started talking to me again? You see how fast you came apart? Jeez. Pathetic. Plus, look where we're at. I'm going to let bygones be bygones. Only... On only... From here on out, you listen to me. Got it? <sighs> yeah, I got it. Good. Look in your hands. A gun? Where the hell? Just be quiet. Wait until they open the trap door to feed you. Then pull it. Get the keys. Then use it. On everybody? This is a one-horse town. Midnight on a weekend. You didn't notice the shift change, huh? Right now, there's only four on duty. You got six bullets. Don't waste any. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I didn't see any signs of the creature or its offspring, Daniel. Yeah, me neither. Hey, where's Sophie? I see her. She's coming over that hill. I didn't see anything. He swears the Yama Abba is roosting in the orchard. Something doesn't feel right. You notice that too. Here's something I noticed. Every time he spoke, he seemed to fade a little. Yeah, I actually noticed that too. We should find a hotel. Sleep there until tomorrow evening. Come back here and then look again. You don't want to stay here? I don't think it's a good idea, Sophie. Too many questions can put us in a haze. It's dangerous to be in a haze. Might be right. Plus, in the hotel, I can do more research on this creature. Hold on. What's up, Daniel? I just had a thought. There's more than one creature involved. Yeah, we know. We know she has offspring. The guy in the gas station took back the flesh from his kill. No, you guys, Canton is a spirit. He's not alive. <laughs> He's pointing us in another direction. Makes sense when he was talking, a part of him would look like a fourth generation VHS. This is connected to the Yamaha? If Canton is a ghost, then who sent the email for us to come here? We find a hotel, get some rest. Rufus? Yeah? Track that email. We'll find who sent it and why they attach Canton's name to it. Here's your breakfast. Open the door, asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fella. Hey. Don't, don't kill me, uh, okay? 
please. Don't. Look. Uh, there's no reason to kill me. <laughs> That'll teach him to beg. Hey, 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 hey! Huh? What's wrong with this gun? You picked the wrong day to kill cops, asshole. Oh, shit. My arm, it, it hurts. Help. Hey. What's wrong with him? He's having a heart attack, fool. <laughs> Today's your lucky day. Just leave him. I, I, I don't know, man. We should at least help him. Just leave him. It ain't right. You want to go back to jail? They catch you, they'll fry you. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. How? Where did he get the gun? Daniel Dread Episode 2, Tiki Baby. Written by Mark Slade, starring Lothar Tuppen as Daniel, Tanya Maloyevic as Sophie, Matt Weller as Rufus, Pete Lutz as Ellison and Officer One, Drew Prophet as Moloch and JJ, Austin Beach as Tiki and Dad, Rhonda Mitchell as Marge and the Waitress, Joshua Price as the Clerk, Katie Lofton as the Woman and Jenny, Wesley Critchfield as Charlie and Canton, Janet Dider as Officer Two, and Nancy Bueller as Sergeant Haynes. Music was by Chauncey Haworth. This series was created and developed by Mark Slade and Lothar Tuppen, directed and edited by Daniel French. This is Geneva Aubrey speaking. Fishbonius sound design. Thank you for traveling Chronosphere Spectral Streams. This has been episode two of Daniel Dread. We know you have enjoyed yourselves and look forward to seeing you on the next voyage. Until then, keep your cosmos clean. <laughs>